Nari Shakti on full display at the Republic Day. Isro, after having made a hat trick, now shining at the Republic Day. I have with me Mr. S. Somnath, the chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization. Uh, Mr. Somnath, Nari Shakti on full display, Isro shining. Of course, I think uh, this Republic uh, Day celebration has uh, the special theme of Nari Shakti, not only from ISRO, from across all domains, all states and all um, activities that uh, represents the Republic. Specifically from ISRO, they were invited, women scientists, large contingent, 200 plus, and they were there with the uh, in the gallery and they were also in the ISRO float, uh, showcasing the power of women uh, in India, in India, especially in the space sector. Now, when people talk about the Indian Space Research Organization, the one mission which is being spoken about very heavily is the Gaganyaan mission. And I understand in the first uh, few missions of Gaganyaan, it will be all male. When can one expect a women astronaut going up for an Indian rocket from Indian soil on Gaganyaan? So it all depends on the type of uh, requirement that we have for Gaganyan. The early missions of Gaganyan are mostly uh, technology development and technology proving missions where the first of them will be without human and later it will be with the human and the one which are selected, the astronauts who are there in the pool right now, are all IAF trainer pilots, you know pilots, trainers, test pilots, test pilots rather. So they are of a, a very different uh, era. <laughs> So uh, there are not many available uh, right now. So they have selected four of them and they are undergone the training program. And they will be with us for the total journey of Gaganya and as, as not only as the astronauts, but also as trainer of future astronauts. But then it, when it stabilizes a little later, when we have greater confidence on doing human space missions on a regular basis, of course the, the core should expand, not only with the pilots, but also with mission specialists who will do specific scientific tasks and also experiments, building space station, technology specialist, etc. So uh, women naturally has to come in. Of course, in the IAF uh, domain also, there are, I know, I understand there are test pilots now, uh, fighter pilots in women, and they will also graduate over a period of time to test pilots. And they will also be, they will also have the opportunity to be selected or not otherwise, based on the various other parameters. So I hope that uh, maybe after four or five of Gaganyan missions, we should be able to induct women into the core. Now, there was the Indo-French summit and there were many things which happened in the space domain. Can you tell me a little bit about that? See, the con connection between French and India has been very strong in the space in the past, uh, of last uh, so many years. Uh, right, you remember that we had a strong collaboration building rocket engines, uh, the Viking Vikas engine, uh, Development happened way back in the 80s, uh, 80s and later, which paved way for the PSLVs and the current rocket uh, capabilities that we have. Though they have discontinued, we still use those engines. And later we had many other collaborative missions like the Megatropics, the Saral, and all of this happened as a joint building of sci scientific missions to understand the uh, tropical interest both, both India and French have. We also have various other connections, especially even in Gaganyan we have connections, so they are helping us in many ways in um, looking at the medical side of the whole uh, program. They are also... But what was discussed on the specific cooperation between uh, President Macron and Prime Minister Modi in this particular visit where he was the chief guest at the Republic? See, we, we engage in various ways. One of course is uh, we have been a strong partner in launching satellites with the rocket that uh, the French CNES along with Ariane Space built that the uh, Ariane Way rockets right at its beginning you know we have been partners large number of satellites have already been launched I think it's around 22 plus so uh, we also are going to launch another satellite GSAT 20 through NSIL soon through the same rocket no it's uh, it, that will be through the that is the, spa that is the SpaceX rocket yeah, I understand I made a mistake that, that that is through another rocket of course we would have allowed it to launch it through Ariane space of course they don't have their radiant old space. heritage yeah they are, their rocket is not yet ready of course they are hoping that in our future we will be building heavier satellites and coming to them for launch so this is one uh, you know, uh, type of engagement they are looking at. The second th type of engagement is, of course, they have a large uh, backlog of launches, uh, especially that, that should have launched the Arian. They are looking at why not we share a common 
uh, understanding between them for us to enable launches. If it comes to India, they can launch and if it comes to them, we can launch based on the availability of launchers. It is a mutual agreement that uh, we would like to engage with through NSIL and the, uh, the French, which is going to be a good one. So, so your baby launch vehicle Mark III or Bahubali may get commercialized using the clients which go to France and then they can be bounced to, to ISRO? Yeah, it is possible. And uh, not ISRO, it is going to be a commercial launch. So it is NSIL who will operate that type of uh, contracts and agreement. It is purely a commercial agreement. And we are also discussing various other technology collaborations like building future engines and uh, building future spacecrafts. Uh, we have one of the one of the agreement that we have now worked on is called Trishna, which is a thermal imaging satellite, which is required uh, for uh, agriculture, uh, the water resource management, the soil moisture study, etc., which is a very high high end thermal imager which uh, the French is developing, and we are going to build the satellite and launch it. So this is another agreement, another type of uh, activity. We are also discussing various other cooperations, especially in human space flight, also because uh, the Europe also is looking at developing human space flight capability over a long period of time, and this has been contracted, I understand, to some companies in Europe, and they are looking at launch opportunities uh, because their rockets are not ready. So those discussions are going on. We are also looking at how to make uh, compatible uh, the, both the human act, space activity in Europe and India Gaganyan, to be uh, similar so that we have a mutual exchange possible in terms of uh, cargo missions uh, whenever they are ready. We can exchange our capabilities. This is yet another domain of discussion. So how is 2024 looking like for ISRO? 2024 is going to be the year of Gaganyan preparation that we have already declared uh, as needed for by the Honorable Prime Minister to have achieved the launch at least in by 2025 end. We need to complete large number of testing uh, development processes in this year, uh, especially the unmanned missions to orbit and then bring it back safely. At least two missions we are looking at. We are also looking at abort missions which will prove the safety of the crew. We also have to do many ground tests, uh, hundreds of them, to prove the subsystem development, including environmental control, life support, uh, rocket intelligence, etc. So, hoping that all of this will be completed along with the other missions which are scheduled, the regular missions which are scheduled, the Gaganyan will get a top priority this year. And how is the work on the space station and also putting an Indian on the moon shaping up? Uh, I will no futurist. No, they are not futurist. They are currently happening. <laughs> so the announcement has already come from uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of the vision. So we are bound to fulfill it. So we are on the job. And uh, I can tell you the, the enthusiasm within the organization is very high. Every day I am taking review of uh, those uh, various options that are coming in front of me, uh, of choices, options. So we are constituted many committees to look at uh, different designs, different possi possibilities. And uh, surprisingly, it's what type of ideas coming from our, our engineers and scientists on how to build it in the fastest possible way with the available technologies and, and also identifying the technologies that need to be developed in a due course of time. So all of these are happening now. So it's a, an exciting time for engineering uh, work that is happening in building the conceiving the space station for India and also preparing ourselves for the man landing on the moon but that is little far away but we need to develop certain capabilities so what we are looking at in moon mission is to have more launches uh, to moon to develop that capability over a period of time and ultimately expand the Gaganyan program also match with these two at some point in time. So happy with the progress? Of course I am always happy, optimistic, enthusiastic about what is waiting for us tomorrow. Yes. So that was Mr. S. Somana, Chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization telling us exciting times for ISRO, the Gaganyan readiness program in full swing and having an Indian space station soon and putting an Indian on the moon very likely in the time frame which Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given. With camera person AJ Joseph in New Delhi, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.